Chapter 7, Boy Tipping. Otis was sick of human kids tipping over sleeping cows. He figured that if he was leader, he was going to do things his way and teach those kids a lesson. All he needed was a car. Can you distract Mrs. Beatty? We need to borrow her car. The Jersey cows borrow it all the time. What's the big deal? They usually take it after the Beatties have gone to bed. But I want to follow those kids right now to see where they live. Otis, taking out of context, you sound like a real creeper, creeper right now, you know that? We have to get moving. Show yourself to Mrs. Beatty until she can't take it anymore. But don't let Mr. Beatty see you. Can I leave in your cr capable hooves? I've got it under control, Otis. So basically, this new minigame right here is not really a new minigame at all. It's just tease mailman all over again, literally. The only difference is that the person you're teasing is the one you expect to see you expect to see you, and the one that's the other, the one you're not trying to let see you is the um, innocent is another innocent bystander, basically. Well, I don't know about innocent. Mr. Beatty is not exactly the most the biggest stud. Uh, Shining star on the block or whatever. I don't know. He's not exactly the greatest ray of sunshine, basically. And, uh... Just like last time, I believe they cap you at a certain amount of points, actually. I think. I could be wrong, though. Maybe. I don't know if they actually do or not. My ears are getting sore listening to you. I specifically remember, like, back in the, uh, GameCube version- Oh, okay, so they cap you out at 200 points this time. Okay. It's still stupid that you gotta replay the minigame over again just to get the star, but... I don't know. Huh. You know, I'm back in, uh... I also thought it was stupid that they did the same thing with, your, with uh... With, a uh, Tease Mailman. I don't know why they do that. Like, why they require you to play this minigame twice to get the star rating. Nifty! Grade A leather, baby. That's just not, that's not a flaw of the Wii version. That's not the Wii version's fault. It's just all the versions in general require that, make you do that. You're one smooth cow. Come other, some other night you can come back here if you want to tease, tease Miss Beatty again. But right now, let's get after those kids. Bud, do you remember how to start this car? You gotta kick it into gear! Alright, so... Next up, we have ourselves a uh, joyride. But uh, first of all, we have uh, we gotta talk to Otis again in order to initiate it. However, I'm gonna go ahead and play Tease Tease Mr. Speedy one more time just to get that star rating. Um, now, I what I'm gonna do instead is I'm not gonna show myself playing the mini game all over again. You guys saw it, you know how it goes. To get a really high score, you just do all the hard moves only. So for the most part, I'm just gonna cut through this this uh, this this few minutes of me playing the mini game. The ninja! Sorry, I had to make that reference one more time. But I guess one more, one more thing I will say while I'm replaying this minigame is that one way you can tell when Mrs. B is about to make him look outside is immediately the, basically the moment he fall, he starts to fall asleep. And also, if there's one thing I will say it's what's worth playing this minigame again is the fact that Mr. B has some pretty funny lines to say, like, I should have married your sister, or can't you wait till daybreak to... Oh. Crap, I got an A. Not a star. Ugh. Uh, you know, at this point, I don't care. Let's just do this joyride. Fasten your seat belts! Let's go stalk some children. Like, seriously, this is what we're doing. We're seriously doing this crap right now. Let's move it. Aaron, you're driving. We need to follow the kids at a distance. Don't get too close or they'll see that, sh that we're cows. But don't get too far or we'll lose them. Got it? Leave it to me. Hey, look, Otis. I didn't want to. I didn't want to stalk kids. Now, okay, this is on you. You're the one driving. I'm just going to not. How about? Ha, can I like just not be involved in this at all? Can, or can I at least just sit in the back seat? Because I I don't want to be involved in this crap. This is on you, Otis. I think it's really crappy that these kids are coming to the field tonight and you know uh, tipping over sleeping cows, but. I think a better way to do, but to go about this would be just simply let the like find a way, let the humans know, like the adult humans know that they're doing this, so that they can get punished. You know, surely there's some humans out there that care. But either way, got uh, 
us in the driver's seat, or us in the passenger seat, and the Jersey Cows in the back seat. And this is even easier than the actual joy rides where you had to race the Jersey Cows, because you don't actually have to go fast or be a time or anything. No, this time it says extremely, extremely uh, monotonous, basically, because you have to just tap the two button fat enough to the point where you can keep up with them, but you also have to brake every now and then to make sure you're not going too fast. So it's just really, if anything, it's just kind of monotonous and you're just kind of waiting until you get to the end of it, basically. And this goes on for quite a while, too. These kids live pretty far away. Like, they, they go biking pretty far from where they live just to tip over sleeping cows, so... Makes you wonder, like, what's even, what is even, a, even the point? Of course, you only actually um, tip over one of the kids anyway, so... And yet, they all go to the exact same house. I don't understand, like, why we're only stalking one of the kids. Of course, obviously, it happens to be Snotty Boy, but of course, the big kid doesn't look anything like Snotty Boy, so... I don't know. There's a lot of things about this that don't make sense compared to the movie, at least. In the movie, at least, it at least made sense that they went to Snotty Boy's house because Snotty Boy was the only boy, like, the only kid they witnessed tipping over cows. So, I mean, like, yeah, his friends were egging him on, but he was the, one, the only one who was actually doing it. So, in the movie, it made sense to... Um, to stalk him of all the kids, but here it's like all the kids are stalk or tipping over the cows. So, and yet we're stalking all of them, and somehow they all live in the same house, but only one of them's tipped over. I don't know. It just there's just something that feels very wrong about this, you know, stalking these kids. There's just something that feels very, 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 very off about this, you know. Regardless of whether they're, you know, bulls or not, I know that's what, I, I've been calling them cows, but they're actually called bulls, but regardless of whether they're animals or not, it doesn't matter. It's still really wrong, <laughs> especially out of context. The newcomer kept the motor running. Otis and the Jersey cow snuck inside and introduced the snotty kid to boy tipping. <laughs> Nearly woke the whole neighborhood. They had to get out of their bags. Okay, so now we have the second act of the Joy Ride, where you actually have to get. Basically, you're going backwards. You're going back to the barnyard, and you're trying to avoid the cow, the, the cows, the um, the cops. And I just noticed that my cow is the wrong breed. That's kind of interesting. Aaron, uh, what happened to your? Uh, color there. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter at all, but still, it's just kind of interesting to note that. Okay. So this time, it goes by a lot faster. Um, you don't have to race or anything. Well, actually, there is a time to race, I guess, actually. Yeah, there's a timer in the top left corner, but it does not take that long at all to get there, so you don't have to worry about that. Well, actually, I guess in the in the cartoon, the Snyboy was called, uh, his name was Eugene. Like, that's his actual name. And uh, Mrs. B, Mr. and Mrs. B happened to be his aunt and uncle, actually. So, uh, that's kind of interesting, I suppose. And so, with that being the case, then I guess it would make sense that they'd be tipping over sleeping cows, because they, when they, when he stays with uh, Aunt Aunt Beatty and uh, Uncle Norman, isn't the isn't Mr. B named Norman or something like that? I think so. Yeah, it makes sense then, I guess. But either way, here's our goal right here. Now, Joyride is another minigame that you have to replay to get a star on. But this time, it actually makes sense because they actually changed the minigame up. So, it's you actually have incentive to replay the minigame. I don't know if I'll be... Oh. Nifty! Now that, my friend, is driving! You totally milked it! Those kids won't be back again. Mission accomplished. You are hereby, from this day forward, an honorary Jersey cow. Catch you later, buddy. All right, catch you later too, buddy. I still think what we did there was wrong, but whatever. Okay, so we're up to 11 minutes here, so I guess I'll go ahead and do the actual joy ride that actually gets you a rating. So we'll get, let's go ahead and get to it. Get to it. If this is one of your 25 stars, so you might as well do this at some point during the story mode. 
So basically, there. I, basically, what you have to do is you have to go through. Wait, hang on. I don't think there's actually like an, an actual objective. All you do is just drive around until the time runs out, and you get as many gopher bucks as you can. It's literally all there is to it. There is no goal, no nothing. The gopher bucks are the goal, but you don't have to get all of them to get a star. So I actually think uh, I do believe maybe the score you, the score is based off how many coins you get. I don't know for sure exactly. I also don't know why some of the gopher bucks are higher than the others because it makes me think that I can jump, but you can't on a car because that wouldn't make sense but uh anyways yeah i'm pretty sure like one i still want to see though like if it's if it's actually it's actually what it is drive wherever you like and pick up coins before time runs out yeah basically yeah there's literally no goal that you're driving towards just pick up as many over bucks as you can stop but again i'm still I'm still left wondering like is it is my score based off how many gopher bucks i get that's the only thing that makes sense i suppose yeah, you're just driving around till time runs out. So I guess I could, uh, with this being what we're doing right now, I guess I could talk about Grand Theft Auto, my experience with it. I remember playing uh, San Andreas growing up. Or what? It, or was it Vice City? I think it was Vice City. It was, it was on the PS2, I remember that. Um, but yeah, that's the only Grand Theft Auto I remember I, I played growing up. Otherwise, I haven't played any of the other ones, and... Now that I have a PS4, I guess now would be a good time to get to actually pick up the game and start playing, like the fifth one, the newest one. But I'm sure at some point they're going to release the sixth one, I'll just pick up that one instead and play it when it comes out, rather than just playing the fifth one as it's old, as it's getting old. I know the fifth one's been out since 2013, so... Honestly, I don't remember if the sixth one came out yet or not. I, I have no idea whatsoever, that's just how out of touch I am with that series, but... I'm still very much interested in playing it. I guess this also makes me think of Simpsons Hit and Run. I was thinking of doing a blind let's play of that game, actually. Like picking up on GameCube or PS2 or Xbox or whichever port I want to get. And doing LP of it blind because I've never played through it in full before. I've played it, I've played it like every now and then. I do, I do happen to know that it is basically Simpsons uh, Grand Theft Auto, essentially. That's all it is. But... It's a really good game from what I've heard, what I've experienced, so it's, I'd definitely be interested in doing a blind let's play of it. I just don't know much about The Simpsons in general, and I don't know like the exact... Well, I do know that the, like, the plot involves aliens, that's all I know. But that's pretty much the plot of most Simpsons games, so... Yeah, no clues there. So that's why I'd be interested in doing a blind let's play of it. There's all sorts of other unlicensed... or sorts of license game. I mean, like, there's a lot of Simpsons games out there in general. It's a Simpsons game for pretty much every video game system out there. So... And I have not played or, or played, like, any of them. So, hell, if I want to, I could do a blind let's play of every Simpsons game. So I know Road Rage is another game on the 6th generation consoles that's kind of similar to the Simpsons Hit Run. But, uh... Yeah, I'm thinking that I could do that, too. But uh, after, otherwise, we have uh, 75 gopher bucks here. So I'm pretty sure maybe that's enough to get a star. I, I just don't know. Like, I can't even tell, like, if there are any gopher bucks left because, like, they don't appear until you get, like, they don't appear on the map until you get a lot closer to them. So it's hard to tell how many of them I'm missing and how many there are in total. I want to say, like, around 100, but I could be wrong there. That would make sense, though. I seem to recall. Yeah, honestly, uh, this joyride is actually the one of the least memorable parts, but parts of the game for me, because I just don't know. Like, if you're supposed to just collect all the gopher box or just wait till time. I just don't know. Like, could you literally just sit at the beginning point and wait for a time run out and still get a star then. Just one of the things I wonder about this. Okay, so, we got, so there's obviously over a hundred. And we're definitely not going to get all of them, but I think we still might get a star anyways. We've still got quite a few of them. I think it's just a hundred to get a star, I'm pretty sure. If I remember correctly. Well, we're about to find out, because time is just about out at this point. I need some water. 
Say we got all the gopher bucks there, but no, there's some of that in there. Whatever, I think we still got a star, anyways. Let's see. Star, yep, that's it. Oh, okay, so you are rated based on how many gopher bucks you get. Okay, well, I know you need at least 79 to get a star, so yeah, that's pretty easy. That is a very easy star. Alright, well. That's, that's going to be it for today's episode, y'all. It's the first episode, Chapter 7. Um, we took on basically the main objective of the chapter, you know. We tipped over the sleeping boy, so... Uh... But that still leaves two more missions, actually, believe it or not. There's still two more missions left of Chapter 7, and that'll be it. That's, that's literally just four minigames, actually, this whole chapter. So, in addition to that, though, we will be doing other stuff, though, to keep this chapter a little longer. I still have all the super squirt locations to do. I haven't forgot about that. Don't worry. And uh, we'll think about that in the next episode, y'all. So see you guys next time for some more Barnyard. Thank you. Goodbye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching this episode of Barnyard. I'd like to give a shout out to currently my only patron, Jose Cazaraz. If you'd like to have your channel featured here or see episodes ahead of time, follow the Patreon link below for more details. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new episodes. Tune in tomorrow for another video.